Before we start a lesson like this one, students often ask the question, why? Why do we have to learn this stuff? You know, <laughs> there are all sorts of reasons why we're learning things. We're learning things for, well, just, just academic maturity. Um, you know, being able to have prerequisites taken care of so that we can learn things in the future. Um, this one, though, pretty darn applicable to any of the programming that you're going to be doing. For example, whenever we're talking about Unix permissions, Unix permissions are done with a 9-bit binary value. Well, the generic ones. First three bits, that one is the uh, owner, the owner's permission. The next three bits, that's the group's permission. And the last three bits, this is other permission. And what it does is it says you can read, write, or execute. Read, write, or execute. Read, write, or execute. And we put ones or zeros in those bits in order to be able to set them or clear them. So for example, owner might have all all of the uh, abilities. Uh, group and other may only have read and execute, but not be able to write. And so this, <laughs> and it's done in base eight or octal. So whenever you set permissions, you would get something like seven, five, five. That would be the permissions for that particular item in your Unix box. But what, we, what do we want to do? What if we want to just turn on one permission and leave everything else alone? Maybe we want to say, okay, what I want to do is take away write per permission from, every, from everybody, but leave all other settings alone. Somebody else had, had set settings before, but we want to just clear this. How do I just put a zero in just that bit? Okay. Or let's take a look at another concept. How about the RGB definition for 24 bits? Yes, there are other methods of representing color. This is RGB red, green, blue. There are other methods for representing color, but what I'm interested in is just this 24-bit binary pattern of ones and zeros. We divide it up into three bits, so three parts. We have a red component, we have a green component, and we have a blue component. And each one of these is eight bits. All right, so let's say that you've got some sort of a, an app that does color. You know, maybe, maybe, it's just a, maybe it's just some sort of an app and you just want to be able to have sliders to allow the users to change the color, to change the amount of red, to change the amount of blue in these different, um, in these different values. Well, how can we, for example, leave red and green alone while modifying the blue value? Or leave, uh, or leave red and blue alone and modify just the green value? Is there a way to just simply manipulate these patterns of ones and zeros? Give you another example, um, hardware control. Hardware, whenever you're looking at controlling the inputs and outputs, for example, maybe you've got some sort of an L, some sort of LED bank. Uh, maybe there's a, or, or maybe there's lighting in a room, and each light is controlled by a single bit in a binary value. So you've got some pattern of ones and zeros, and in order to turn on or off lights, you're reading or writing from a specific memory location. It's called memory mapped I.O. You're reading or writing to a memory location, and anywhere that there are ones in my pattern here, that will have a light on, and anywhere there are zeros, that'll have a light off. Well, Maybe I want to turn that light off, but leave everything else alone. How do I just clear that bit? Yes, you could say, okay, we could add or subtract values, uh, powers of two, but let's ask a question. Let's say that this light right here has been turned on, all right? 
And then somebody does some action which makes it so it turns on that light again. They, they ask to turn that on, light on again. And what you do is you go ahead and say, all right, I'm going to add, what's that? Two, one, two, four, eight, 16. I'm gonna add 16 to this number in order to turn that light on. Guess what? That light's already on. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna put this guy to zero and set this guy to one. And so you're going to have exactly not what you wanted to have done. You were going to turn on a light you didn't want to have on and turn off the light that was on and you wanted to leave on. So how do we manage to control turn on and off bits without modifying or changing or modifying other bits? Let's talk about another example. Let's just say you want to know what, how many bits this particular machine I'm using has. There's a really easy way to do it. What about the value, you remember negative one? Negative one in binary, two's complement binary, is just a whole bunch of ones. And so if you want to have some sort of a method of displaying or showing how many ones we've got in our machine that we're working with, you know, is this a 16-bit machine, a 32-bit machine, a 64-bit machine? All you have to do is set negative one, look at what the bits are, see how many bits we've got, you'll be able to know exactly how many bits you're working with in that particular machine. So all of this work is based on something we call bitwise operations. Let me make some room. Bitwise operations. Now, a bitwise operation is the ability to manipulate bits at the bit level, right? Manipulate numbers, integers at the bit level. And uh, there are actually four different operations that we're going to be looking at. There's the bitwise inverse, and the bitwise inverse inverts all bits in an integer. All right, then there's also the bitwise and. Now this operation, what it does is it clears specific bits in an integer. And then there's the bitwise or. This one sets specific bits in an integer. There's a fourth one, bitwise exclusive or. Now, I've already talked about inverting all the bits in an integer clearing specific bits in an integer, setting specific bits in an integer. Bitwise exclusive or is a little bit like the bitwise inverse, except instead of inverting all the bits, it inverts specific bits. All right, now, Every one of these operations is able, you can, is, you're capable of doing in your computer. There is, you know, in your programming language, all programming languages have a specific set of characters that allow us to modify, change individual bits inside of an integer by using these different operations. There's a syntax for each one of them. Let's talk a little bit about at least the first one. Let's talk about a bitwise inverse first. All right, now the bitwise inverse, the command, let's just go ahead and say that we have created some sort of a variable. We're gonna call it A. And at some point in our code, A has been set to a specific value. But I want to flip all the bits. An interesting idea for this would be if I want to highlight text. 
Um, you know, maybe you want to change the color of text, highlight it, make it a very different color than what's showing up on the board, or showing up on your screen by inverting all the bits. Now, what the problem is, is that if you've got like black uh, text on a white background or white text on a black background, if you invert it, the text is going to disappear. But let's not worry about the, 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 the uh, specifics of what we're implementing yet. Let's just talk about inverting all the bits. The way that you do this is you use the tilde. All right, this tilde right here is going to make it so that all the bits will be flipped in an integer value. So, for example, if the original value was 01101001, and we sp and that was the original value of what was in A, tilde A is going to be equal to 10010110, the inverse. Okay. And there are a number of things that we can do with this, but right now what we're looking at is just, if all I want to do is just flip all the bits, that's how it's done. In the next lesson, we're going to be talking about the bitwise AND and show how it can be used to just clear certain bits and leave all the other bits alone.